In today's video, I'm finally going to work on the Marantz 2215B receiver. I'm going to look at the power supply. I'm going to check the power supply output voltages. I think there's four of them. And I might add, I downloaded the service manual and um, printed out the power supply schematic. I just basically made it larger so I can read it easily. Now we can see here that uh, J814, for example, is supposed to have about 10 volts. And your voltage now might be a little bit different depending upon the status of your components and the line voltage coming in. We also have to remember that, uh, for example, you used to have, for example, in the United States, 110 volts. Now you got 120. And in Europe, it used to be 220 volts. Now you have 230 volts. So I'm looking for a voltage that's pretty close. I mean, it's not going to be exact, but if it's, you know, in the ballpark, as I say, I'm not going to get too excited. Now I'll start out by checking J814, which is supposed to be 10 volts. And the good thing about this Marantz is everything is really kind of easy to get to. And the 10 volts is, of course, it's supposed to be DC. We'll check the meter. So there's a meter, it's 10.1 uh, or 2 volts, which is uh, close enough. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and just show how to check J808, which is supposed to be 52 volts. Also, I highly recommend whenever you switch the probes here, the voltmeter, shut the unit off, put the probe in the right position, turn the unit back on. That way you won't stand a chance of making a short or moving your hands around the unit while it's running. Okay, I went ahead and uh, hooked up the voltmeter to J808 and it's supposed to be 52 volts DC. And of course I shut the unit off when I switched the meter leads and I waited a minute before I took the voltage reading so I gave the unit a chance, the power supply a chance to stabilize. And here we can see we've got about 52 volts. Now what we're looking at here right now is an AC waveform which is called Ripple. I'm getting this from that 52 volt DC pin, the 52 volt output. and what we want, we want this AC waveform to be as small as possible compared to the DC. If you can just imagine for a second, just imagine basically the AC is kind of like superimposed on the DC and in an ideal power supply we would have pure DC coming out and all the AC would be removed and what we're looking at here, this is what I'm pointing at now, this is the remainder here and in this specific case, it's 200 millivolts. It's a sawtooth waveform. And in order to see this, I had to put the scope in the AC, basically in the AC position. Another thing I want to point out is that right now I have a dummy load hooked up. And I have my old analog scope hooked up across the dummy load. And I want to show what happens to the ripple when basically when the load increases. So I'm going to go ahead and turn up the volume. I'm feeding in a 1000 Hz sine wave into the aux input and now you can watch what happens. Right now I have the basically the volume turned pretty much down and I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume up which is going to give me more output at the speaker end. So watch what happens. At least in theory it should go up. Okay there it is. It's going up. So basically the how should I put it? The heavier the load, the more the ripple. That's not unusual. In fact, that's normal. Now I do have a problem with one of the power supply voltages at pin J811. There's supposed to be a voltage of 33.7 volts DC and I've got 40 volts which is way too high. So what I'm going to do now is check these resistors here. 
R803, R804, and R805. I'm now measuring R803, which is a 56 ohm resistor. I'm getting 56 ohms. In case I didn't, I would probably go ahead and remove it completely and measure again or unsolder one side and then measure. Now here's the 56 ohms. I couldn't get a reading with R805 here, which is a 100K resistor. So I went ahead and pulled it out. I'm now measuring the resistance of that 100K resistor and it's showing an open, so I'm going to find a replacement resistor and put it in. Now I put the new resistor in and before the voltage was about 40 volts DC. Now I'm getting about 34 point, let's say 34.7 volts. So that brought the voltage down about 5 volts and that seems to be the problem. The voltage is supposed to be around, I think almost around 34 volts. So I think this took care of this problem. I think this about brings this video to a close. Over here in between these two capacitors here on the left there's a pass transistor and it has a heat sink on it. I just went ahead and checked if that was on there tight not loose. And here's a large resistor here which gets pretty hot and right next to that was the diode which was really close to touching that so I went ahead and I pushed it over a little bit and that's about all I did for now. In the future I might make a video when I swap these capacitors out. Anyways, thanks for watching.